So you are welcome to take it away. Great, thank you so much, Wendy. Um, hello, everyone, and, and welcome to come. Welcome and thank you for coming to our session today. Um, let me just start my slides here. So um, as Wendy said, this is changing the profession from the inside out, the Library Fellows Program at Simmons University. And we are your presenters. So I am here with IJ Hennessy, who is one of the Library Fellows, one of the inaugural Library Fellows at Simmons University. Um, she'll be telling you a little bit more about herself and her experience as a Library Fellow um, as part of this presentation. Um, Vivian Paroli is the director of, La of the library at Simmons University, and she will also um, tell you a little bit more about herself and explain um, a little bit more of the library fellows program as it's being implemented in the Simmons University library, um, especially around the mentoring aspect of the program. And my name is Laura Saunders. I'm a professor at the School of Library and Information Science um, at Simmons University. And I'm gonna be talking to you a little bit more about some of the background of this program. So really this, um, this presentation is to introduce you to this library fellows program, which is a new initiative at Simmons um, and to kind of tell you what the impetus was for starting this program and walk you through the pilot. Um, and then we would really like to open this up for discussion. Um, as Wendy said, please do feel free, especially if you, if you have questions as we go, to put them in the chat. And um, I am happy to address questions as, as we're going. And then there will definitely be time for questions and discussion at the end as well. Um, so I realize I'm not telling you anything that you don't already know, um, but the big impetus for our library fellows program was just a recognition of the lack of diversity um, in the library profession as a whole. And of course, that is also reflected in library and information science degree programs like the one that we have at Simmons. Um, and this lack of diversity cuts across all different kinds of identities and communities. Um, so certainly there is a, a glaring lack of racial diversity, which we see from the fact that about 80% of the librarians um, in practice identify as white. Um, but this racial diversity or lack thereof um, certainly also extends to ethnic and linguistic diversity so that um, people in libraries for whom their first language may not be English are often not going to be able to, not only will they not necessarily see a librarian who looks like them or in a library program see a faculty member who looks like them, but in a lot of cases, they also uh, may not have the opportunity to speak with somebody who can communicate with them in their preferred language. Um, and again, this also extends to other areas such as socioeconomic diversity, since we know that the lar uh, you know, a large majority of librarians come from a middle class background. Um, LGBTQ plus identities, to be honest, um, for LGBTQ plus disability and first generation, I don't think we even have very good statistics on the breakdown of demographics in the profession, because in a lot of cases, we either don't track them or haven't tracked them for very long. Um, and then in a lot of cases, haven't tracked them well. So for instance, we know that it has not been uncommon until very recently to only ask for binary gender identification um, so that we don't even necessarily know how many people might identify as non-binary or trans, um, et cetera. So what we do know is that there is a lack of diversity. We don't even necessarily know how, how big of a gap that is. Um, so one of the things that we we need to recognize is what are the barriers to entry into the profession that is is leading to this this wide um, gap and this this glaring lack of diversity. And we did do a little bit of our own research at Simmons, but there there's plenty of existing research and um, you know firsthand experience out there to to really kind of shine a light on this and. Some of the things that we know are barriers to in entry. Um, one of them is the cost of the master's degree program. And this is cost both in terms of financial cost. And of course, that can vary somewhat from, you know, if you're in a public institution, a private institution, if you're maybe going online, the cost of living um, for an in-person program and so on. 
but regardless, um, it's still a high financial cost, no matter where you go or what modality you attend in. Um, but there's also the cost in terms of the amount of time it takes to complete these programs. In addition to that, many what are so-called entry-level positions into the profession seem to require a certain amount of experience. And I mean, I've seen positions that are listed more or less as entry level that require anything from one to three years of experience. And so the question is, how is a person supposed to get experience in the field um, when they do not yet have the credentials that allow you to work in the field, at least, you know, at a certain level? So this often means that people are either in um, severely underpaid um, paraprofessional or support positions, or they are being asked to engage in unpaid experiences like internships and volunteer work. Other things that I think are um, impacting people's um, entry into the profession or retention in the profession, I think one is around academic literacy and the application process. Um, so, you know, in particular, this may be particularly true for first generation students um, who may not have the uh, family background and dedicated support to kind of deconstruct or decode a lot of the processes that are expected in terms of just applying for a master's degree program, figuring out things like what goes into a personal statement, who are you supposed to ask for um, letters of recommendation, um, you know, knowing, for instance, that there's often waivers for application fees or um, that GREs might be waived in some cases, all of those kinds of things that will just get you in the door to begin with. But then even once you are on campus, whether this is um, in person or virtually, navigating the, the bureaucracy of academia, I think, can be really daunting for a lot of people. Um, so both within the degree programs and then out in the profession, I think all of these um, all of these things can lead to isolation for people who come from historically underrepresented or marginalized or racialized backgrounds. Um, and a lot of this is combined with then a lack of mentorship. Um, especially mentorship from other people who have a shared experience. So looking at all of these various barriers to entry, we asked ourselves at SLIS um, and at Simmons, you know, what, what are some ways that we might be able to address at least some of these areas? Um, and that led to the development of this library fellows program. Um, so we, we're going to expand on these various areas of the program as we go. And as I said, Vivian will talk more about um, kind of how this is being implemented in practice and IJ will talk more about her experience as a fellow. Um, I wanna just give a little bit more background. So what we are developing, and I will say that this is still a work in progress, is a three-part program. So people who are interested can apply for these fellowships as they're applying to the master's degree program at Simmons. And the, these fellowship experiences that they are applying for come with three parts. So one is a paid meaningful work experience. These are usually either half or full-time positions. And of course the full-time positions um, will, will come with benefits, um, but it's not just a, a work position you know, for, for a salary and for benefits, but it's a, it's a position in a library or information setting that is really engaging in meaningful work related to library and information science. So these work experiences will vary. And again, Vivian can tell you a little bit more about the ones that we have implemented at Simmons, but they, um, they're across all areas. So we have some in the archives, we have people who are working in more user service oriented positions, helping to um, you know work with reference and instruction, developing curricula. We have a position outside of Simmons University, actually, that's more collections focused, um, archives, etc. Um, the second part of this is tuition support, um, so that all of our fellows are receiving some sort of um, remission or discount on the tuition to try and help 
overcome that cost barrier in addition to, to the paid work experience. And then the third part is what we're calling mindful mentoring. And so what we're trying to do is across different areas have both the employers who are providing the work experience and the SLIS administration and faculty um, provide various mentoring supports that will kind of progress through bringing people into the program, through the program, and looking ahead to their career in the profession. Um, and so this was piloted in fall of 2022 with three positions in the Simmons University Library, which again, I, of, of which IJ is in one of those positions. We added a fourth position with Loyola Notre Dame University um, later on in the fall. Um, we have two more positions at Simmons rolling out um, this fall, and we are in negotiations with three other universities um, or institutions, library institutions, to try to implement some more positions over the next year or two with an um, outlook of, of hopefully eventually being able to offer somewhere between 10 and 15 total positions. So as I said, the work experience entails either full or half time in a library or information setting. Um, this could be library or archival work, but again, something related to, um, to the profession. And the idea is to try and ramp this up so that most of these positions are expected to last between two and three years. Um, so they will carry the participant, the fellow, all the way through from the start of the program through graduation. And the idea is to try and increase the work responsibilities over the course of time so that they are gradually taking on more responsibility and working towards a more professional level position. Um, the tuition support, I think, kind of speaks for itself. So I'm going to jump ahead to the mindful mentoring. Um, and as I said, we're trying to kind of think of this as being across three different areas. So within SLIS, we are trying to focus on the academic support. So hopefully orienting um, students into the, the program, helping them to understand how to navigate, um, you know, everything from the, the LMS system that we're using to the, um, to the institutional offerings at Simmons so that they know where to go to get various kinds of help, whether it be related to their financial aid um, or looking for some kind of academic support or just looking for someone to talk to about career and so on. Um, we expect the employers to provide a certain amount of career support. So again, this is beyond just having them take a job, but really um, integrating them into the staff um, and into the work and offering them some, some more dedicated mentoring within their position. And, and again, Vivian will talk a little bit more about that. And then some more generalized support so that we are looking into doing things like having um, having professionals, having, you know, luminaries in the field who will come in for more informal, like brown bag lunch conversations or dinners with the fellows, um, having, you know, some more dedicated. So every year Simmons runs a, um, a career fair for all of our students. But one thing we'd like to do is kind of build up some more dedicated career support for the fellows where maybe there'll be some ability to network with those employers um, in a separate meeting um, and bringing in some more alums to do more dedicated mentoring. Um, and we're also trying to break these responsibilities down across three areas. So as I said, the LIS program, um, you know, the, the director of the school, uh, the faculty, et cetera, will have certain responsibilities in terms of providing one-on-one -on -one mentoring to the fellows, um, academic mentoring, as well as running programming to support the, um, these students. The employers will have expectations in terms of integrating the students into their staff and providing them with additional support. And of course, there's expectations from the fellows in terms of maintaining um, good academic standing, participating in the mentoring, and um, engaging in those increasing responsibilities. So I just wanted to kind of sum up by thinking about some of the challenges and opportunities that we are facing 
Oh, excuse me. Um, and this is especially with regard, you know, this is coming from the LIS program perspective where we are seeing some challenges and opportunities. I think one big thing is in terms of decolonizing the curriculum. Um, we know that LIS um, is part of a larger structure um, that has, you know, that a, a historical structure that has developed systems and services that have not recognized um, experiences outside of that dominant white male heteronormative experience um, that has often con um, contributed to the marginalizing and oppression of um, various groups. And so part of what we want to do is figure out how to reflect that in the curriculum, how to make sure the curriculum is addressing that. And so we're taking steps to do an EDI audit of our curriculum, as well as an accessibility audit, and just trying to kind of figure out how to make sure that's being addressed. Um, as I mentioned, you know, Simmons University Library at this point is carrying these, this fellows program for the most part. Um, five of our six existing fellowships are in the library. What we really want to do is develop partnerships with some additional organizations in order to grow this program. So we've started with Loyola Notre Dame, um, but we're looking for other partners as well. Um, we're continuing to work on organizing these mentorship possibilities. Um, and this means recruiting people outside of just the faculty, so recruiting alums and, and other people to engage, but also looking into how to do some training um, to make sure that the mentors really understand their, their responsibility and understand how to engage with students who, again, may not have a shared experience. Um, and then finally, we are looking, you know, we are actively exploring with our advancements team how to find more funding so that, again, we can support more of these positions and how and figuring out how to assess this program and how to assess it in a meaningful way that brings the fellows into the assessment, not just for them to provide feedback through a survey or something like that, but we really want to kind of make this participatory so that they are kind of contributing to the development of the program as it goes. Um, so, sorry, jumping ahead a little bit here. So I'm gonna stop here and um, turn this over to Vivian. Thank you, Laura. So um, I think that that just gives you a really good contextualization and setting around the um, ideas behind the fellows program. And, you know, I want to talk a little bit about what it has been like to pilot it and put it into action. And, you know, taking these intentions and um, bringing them to life. And so, you know, this mentorship piece really is at the core of the experience. And, you know, we've always had pre professional um, uh, staff members in the library, but we wanted this to be different. Like it was built with an intentionality around. Um, bringing greater diversity to the profession and as Laura mentioned you know we are such a you know um kind of majority white um cis kind of profession that you know how do we actually make space for people who wouldn't have um experienced that in their lives and so, you know, we had to think about, you know, what are some of the pieces that we actually need to bring to the table? Um, and it really has been a lot about sort of making connections and making this sort of um, a forum where we learn from each other and we make changes and adjustments as needed. So um, next slide, please. Um, so we realized that most people are going to go through the program in anywhere, you know, from like two to three years in general. That's kind of the time frame. And so during that period, um, we really wanted sort of a, a development to happen that was, you know, took into account the fact that most people who come into these positions will have no or little or no experience of working in a library. Um, and we want them to graduate from the LIS program and finish up the fellowship um, in the library, really ready to take their professional careers on by storm. So um, we came up with um, a, a phased approach. And so within each of these phases, the emerging, the developing and the professional, we have sort of three 
buckets, if you will, where we ask the question, like, what do we expect the fellows to learn during this phase? And then we also ask the question, what are we as the library um, going to provide the fellows with in the phase? And then finally, we are asking, you know, how do we ensure success building co um, connections and course correcting? All of those pieces are within each phase. And so to give you a little bit of an example of, you know, what um, activities would look like as they go through these phases, um, you know, the first thing we wanted to do with all of our new fellows last fall was to, you know, get them acquainted with the core functions of the areas where they were working in their departments and to get a sense of where their work fits into the mission and the policies and the workflows of the department and the library as a whole. And then, you know, if we sort of take that idea and look at, you know, as our fellows are now moving into year two of their and and you know, phase, the phases don't necessarily line up with years. I, I want to just sort of emphasize that. But we want them to, in the in the developing phase, um, have knowledge of the roles and the responsibilities of the various departments in the library and in the university as a whole, because now they're kind of doing more sort of outreach. They're connecting to other um, offices and departments on campus. And, um, you know, and then we want them to be able, with assistance if necessary, um, to provide support for their individual department's mission. And then as they sort of get towards the end and sort of are in the professional um, phase, we're, we're sort of saying, OK, so we expect them to have um, a more critical understanding of the work um, in their department and to devise solutions um, to problems or issues with a relative degree of independence so that they're actually, you know, um, moving forward to being able to be, um, you know, have their own agency, if you will. So, you know, I, I did sort of emphasize earlier that this is a, a two directional um, piece that, you know, we as library staff are also um, putting a contributing to each of these phases and um you know we're thinking about um like if if we're going to be the ones mentoring you know it's not just their individual supervisors or managers it really is everybody on the library staff has a stake in this and so you know we're the ones providing the documentation and the explanations and the training on how to complete the work as we expect it um and we're also introducing the fellows to you know what departmental and library mission and vision look like and how that influences goal setting and the work Work that they're doing. Um, we're, you know, providing a toolbox of resources that will help um, the fellows move forward in their careers. We're going to have, you know, uh, not just sort of regular team meetings with departments or their supervisor, but very specific kinds of check-ins where we're sort of really asking them about you know how are things going for you and how do you think the program is working so it's just it's both their individual experience of it and it's you know the process of the program that we're sort of in this constant evaluation because it is new and it is a pilot and you know we we recognize that we need to be really open to sort of making adjustments as we go um, next slide please Okay, so I mentioned that, you know, we're constantly assessing and evaluating, and this really is kind of a, a reflective piece of our work, and it has to be sort of very mindfully and intentionally built in where we're asking the fellows um, to complete self-assessments, and so we had one of these phases take place already um, where we ask them to talk a little bit about you know how they measured their progress um, what kind of goals they had for the next sort of six months um, and then also offering feedback on you know kind of how how helpful were their managers and the people around them um, in supporting their work and also learning a little bit about, you know, their ideas and um, appraisal of the work environment in general. 
And so this is something that, you know, will continue at intervals throughout their time. And, it, and um, you know, it's, it does tie into the phases too. I mentioned that, you know, we're, we're not really tying those to, you know, time because we know that different folks will move through the phases at different pacing and we want to sort of allow the space for that. So, um, you know, it, I think that that really, um, you know, gives a little bit of like it creates a building block so you know basically after they all started in September um and IJ is in the um the access and co and collections area of the library um we have another fellow who's in the archives and then a third fellow who does um curriculum and research um work and so Basically, their first sort of self-assessment was asking them a little bit about um, considering, you know, how did they think they were developing with their core job skills and competencies, um, places where they saw in, you know, the coursework that they were doing in LIS classes, integrating with their library work. Um, we also invited them to consider ideas that they might have for contributing to the library, their department activities or projects. Um, also talked a little bit about, you know, courses that they were interested in taking and any faculty that they might want to work with. Um, we also invited them to um, outline any areas where they had um, you know, interest in professional developments to see what we could work with in them. We also wanted to know um, what they needed from their managers to be successful, the types of resources that they needed, any type of support or feedback that they wanted to offer, but, um, and also um, what could we in the library do to ensure that they felt supported in their work and also achieving a work-life balance because it is challenging for sure to work um, 40 hours a week and take classes and do homework and everything that's associated with that. So from the outset, we're encouraging all of the fellows to create a portfolio of their experiences, which includes the write-ups of these reviews um, and the self-assessments that they're doing. Um, any particular pieces of work or projects that they've been um, involved with, you know, and this could be anything from, um, you know, a, a spreadsheet to manage a project, um, a policy document, or even something like creating um, a research guide, that these sort of form um, evidence of their experience and their um, professional development over the three phases and their time with us. And, you know, we are very fortunate at Simmons that um, our we have amazing faculty who will you know, certainly email us and let us know how, you know, their experiences have been with um, various members of the library staff. And so we're definitely encouraging the fellows to keep copies of all of those kinds of things, which I think really matter and, um, and just sort of put that with their portfolio. All right, next slide, please. So I sort of mentioned that, you know, the process is important here with um, our program. And so when I talk about reflexivity, it really is based on, you know, is this a solid program? Is, is it, could it be better? Could it be different? What, what do we need to change? And we certainly have made some changes in our process because we've had a two opportunities to do hiring for um, the uh, fellows program. And we did change some things the second time around and the hiring committee, even after the second um, uh, group was hired, sat down and wrote up um, of a summary 
of and recommendations of what they want to do differently and a lot of it is timing you know to make sure that we're not kind of giving people you know a, a rushed sense of trying to apply for the fellowships and um when they're already applying to library school and you know and really thinking about you know how do we ensure that we are getting a diverse candidate pool and you know even things like encouraging people you know to apply, even if they don't meet every single one of the criteria, but, you know, just telling them, you know, don't sort of self-select yourself out of this. Um, then, you know, thinking about how could we make the process of interviewing supportive and, you know, that's things like sharing interview questions ahead of time. Um, we have candidates who are you know, all over the United States and in some cases living in other countries and making sure that we choose, um, you know, we're mindful of time zones and choose um, interview times that aren't just, you know, working for our eight to five in on the East Coast. Um, it's also thinking about, you know, do our three phases make sense? And, you know, this is the sort of thing that we might not know that until we get to the very end, you know, does it have to be three phases? Um, is it two or four? Um, and, and how will that look? Um, we also are very mindful of, as I said, this 40 hour work week and taking graduate classes and thinking about, you know, is that manageable? And I think I do probably tell you a little bit about how it has felt for her, but um, it, it is definitely a challenge and we've had to really think about ways to be flexible so that, you know, whilst the library, um, most people tend to work, you know, a Monday to Friday, anywhere from eight to five or thereabouts, um, you know, thinking about other kinds of uh, flexibility with scheduling. Um, for some of the um, fellows who are also in the archives track, they have internships to do on top of their work week. Um, and so really thinking about, you know, how do we help them to fit all of those things in? Um, how do we ensure that they're taking time off to which is part of the benefits package and, and getting rest and recharging? And then the last piece here is really thinking about what do managers need to be good mentors? And, you know, we've really worked on um, getting training for some of our managers um, externally to really learn how to be, um, you know, a, a, a better fit, if you will, um, and to be really thinking about what it takes to support um, their colleagues and staff members and uh, and really you know, making sure that they're asking for what they need as well. So that has been kind of the arc of this so far. And it really does feel like a story that's um, still in development. And, um, you know, hopeful at another time that we'll be able to report out a little bit more on that. So I think I am ready to hand it over to IJ so you get a firsthand account. All right. Hello. Um, I apologize for any wheezing. I'm recovering from a couple of illnesses. Um, I'm going to ignore the order that I put my own bullet points in. Um, just to start off in a more logical place, um, as I was introduced, my name is Aisha. I am our Collections and Access Fellow, which means that I am working in like user services at our service desk. Um, my day-to-day, -day, my primary responsibility is managing our service desk. Um, so a lot of training student workers, helping field the strange questions or challenging questions and patrons, um, and kind of moderating that before it has to go up to the higher management. Um, I also help with a lot of other departmental projects. Right now we're working on maintaining our course reserves collection and keeping that updated. Um, so that's what I'm doing. That's the level of responsibility that I'm currently working with. Um, I came from Lewis and Clark College in Portland, Oregon. I have a BA in psychology with a minor in ethnic studies. Um, and then as said, I came into Simmons last fall, fall 2022. Um, and in between graduating in 2020 and coming here to Simmons, 
I worked for an AmeriCorps program working on college access for underrepresented high achieving high school students. Um, and I also worked at a suburban public library. Um, I think I came into libraries kind of by accident. It was my first work study job in college. Um, it Something just clicked there. I really enjoyed helping people with research. I really enjoyed doing research. Um, and I realized that I, obviously the importance of libraries and particularly helping people build the skills to efficiently gather resources for themselves, um, whether that's teaching them how to be researchers or just to navigate the internet um, and be able to access more informational resources, I think is incredibly important in this day and age. Um, so that's kind of, that became my why for libraries and for pursuing um, the library science masters. Um, in terms of diversity, acknowledging the whiteness of the field and academia more broadly, um, and being multiracial myself, I recognize the importance of information literacy and being able to access information and narratives that are about your life or about your experiences. Um, and not everyone has access to those or knows the pathways to finding those resources and being able to support underrepresented voices in this capacity is something that I'm super passionate about. Um, there's a lot of communities that still don't feel represented in libraries or in academia. Um, and I would really, I, I enjoy being part of being a face that um, maybe looks like someone who isn't as commonly in libraries and hopefully others feel comfortable um, reaching out and running with it. <laughs> um, in terms of the fellowship, like I mentioned, um, obviously, it's an incredible opportunity and very much a wonderful exercise in time management. Um, since I am in a very front facing position, I think one of the skills I'm most excited to take away from the fellowship are my management, both in terms of time and people. Um, it's something I'm really planning to highlight when I start applying for jobs after graduation, just to be able to speak to um, my capacity to manage multiple projects and tasks, um, and also still immerse myself in a community and find ways of doing self-care, um, just balancing a lot of things. Um, I really am planning on leaning more into my fellowship experiences rather than just having a new credential. I think that the library field is very, very focused on experiences. And that makes sense in this field. There's only so many things that classes can teach you that it's a different level of understanding once you get to do the things. Um, so I'm excited to have both of those components, the degree and the experiences in my resume. Um, and really, really looking forward to the work-life balance of hopefully being able to transition straight into a professional role rather than continuing in paraprofessional roles. Um, the final thing I'd like to touch on about the fellowship is just how much the, the cost of, well, the cost of graduate school being offset by the fellowship is an incredible opportunity for traditionally underserved populations and students. Um, it's such a daunting barrier to graduate school in any field. Um, but especially in the library science field, when you look at entry level salaries and positions, um, and that that requires a certain amount of risk tolerance that not everyone is going to have the privilege or the ability to take. Um, 
So in terms of finding ways to enact um, DEI policies or initiatives, finding ways to make education affordable for more people, um, I think is a super meaningful way of doing that. Um, I just talked very, very fast at everyone. Um, again, we're about to transition into questions, so happy to clarify or elaborate. Um, but overall, the fellowship program is a super valuable challenge. Um, and I have felt very supported in speaking with my manager and finding, she's always willing to help me find ways to explore my interests or hone in on them um, and meet, meet me where I am and then find little ways pushing me to grow. Um, so the fellowship program is a wonderful opportunity in developing skills and really getting a grasp on the profession. So thank you for hearing me out. <laughs> Thank you. So just to wrap up really quickly, as I alluded to earlier, um, our next steps, um, a big part of our next steps is developing new partnerships that will allow us to offer additional fellowships. Um, so if anyone here is in an institution where you think you might be interested um, in, in exploring these opportunities, please feel free to reach out to me. Um, at any point. And then, as I said, we're continuing to look for sources of funding that will help to support that expansion and building up our mentoring program. Um, so thank you. I am actually gonna stop sharing the screen now so that we can kind of see each other a little bit better. And um, as IJ already said, would be happy to take any questions, comments, um, observations.